So this is a paper slide video about making constructing dot plots as a way to organize data and get a picture of data that's collected. So what I what I the data I'm using is the uh, data off that spreadsheet that I created um, as my example for that that spreadsheet assignment. We had to identify the variables and you know qualitative quantitative variables, and I decided to make a dot plot that showed the horsepower. Of each of these each of these vehicles, and I decided to because I had automatic transmissions and manual transmissions, I decided to focus on the automatic transmissions. For my ease, I highlighted all the automatic transmissions. So that's what I'm going to graph the green horsepower values. And you can go look at my spreadsheet if this isn't quite big enough for you. So when I'm looking at that data, I noticed that the minimum value was 68. Uh, what is it? it must be cubic inches and then the maximum value is 155 so I didn't really want to have to graph uh, with dot plots it's not an exact kind of thing you're going to have just a general picture of what it look, looks like so I decided I was set my scale I decided to round down to 60 and round up to 160 and for the only reason that is that when I subtracted that I got a I got a difference of 100 or a range of 100 so that made drawing the the dot plot or the yeah the dot plot a lot easier cuz I got to set a scale so what I decided to is because it's a nice even number you know ends in zero I decided to have 10 equal spaces and so then I took a took a took a uh a ruler and I used the metric side just because those were about a centimeters apart and I marked off 10 spaces and I decided that was going to be my scale. I was going to graph uh, between zero, 10, um, 60 to 70 and 70 to 80 and etc. I mean it's also okay if the things got to start getting crowded there's nothing wrong with just skipping a number. I could have done 60, had the line, not written anything there written in 80 so it's all about being able to see clearly what you're doing you don't want it too crowded I didn't think that was too crowded so I did number them all so then what you do when you do a dot plot is well I went to my data I grabbed my paper my scale and um, I had a 90 was my first number so right over the 90 I put a dot notice I just arbitrarily wrote it that high probably don't want it on the line you probably want it above the line then the next number was a 69 so then I put a 69 and what I tried to do is imagine that there's a horizontal line there and I'm going to try to plot all those on the same horizontal line it doesn't have to be perfect um, you got, to me it looks like the 133 is a little bit low to be honest with you but I'm getting an idea of what it looks like so then I just I just kept graphing those numbers 71 and etc and then I came down and I noticed 71 for Germany, uh, for that Germany, which is the Volkswagen Rabbit. Oh, you're off, I'm off the scale. But the Volkswagen Rabbit. Then there's another 71 for Germany, which is the Scirocco. So the way you deal with that is you just put another dot, you stack them. So if there's a repeat, stack it right above it. And you don't have to write the, 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 the labels or anything. I just did that for the sake of this video. And then I just kept continuing. I, I kept, I kept um, putting all the points for all those, all that data onto my my box plot, uh, my dot plot, and that's what it looks like. And notice there was a couple of repeats. Uh, um, I guess I can go look at the actual data. <coughs> um, what is it? It's about one. Oh, yeah, all right. There's two one fifteens. There was. Uh, uh, 295s were there. It looks about like about 95. Well, I, there's a 95, yeah, so it must have been 295s. So, it doesn't matter. Kind of spread out. Mm, it's a picture of it. I don't see really see too, too much there with that. So, one reason that we make pictures of distributions is in order to compare distributions. So, but I and and when you're going to compare compare two sets of data, you kind of want to have, you know, you want to be comparing the same thing. So what I did is I also graphed the manual transmission horsepowers, and I you notice I use the exact same scale. And if you're trying to compare this, and one is drastically different than the other, you kind of got to somehow merge the two scales together. But this one I I didn't have to do too much. I'm seeing. 
what am I seeing here? Uh, I mean, really, we get the comparison's getting more into next week. But I'm seeing, it looks like the manual transmissions, you know, typically have have uh, lower horsepower than the than the automatics. But that's kind of a misleading statement because there's a lot of overlap. In fact, their minimums are about the same. So certainly the high, the automatic have higher uh, horsepowers. Uh, I would say if we're talking about center, the center of this distribution for the automatics is about there. The center for the manuals is down here. So there's the differences in the center. And that's something that the picture let, lets us see. I, I don't know. I notice I haven't found the center. I haven't talked about what that's called. But I can kind of see that. And that's a dot plot. It's that easy.